Today in the news, Threadripper gets three platforms, AMD passes Nvidia, and we got carbon nanotubes. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. We keep hearing that they have more stuff coming this year, not only in the GPU market with a possible Navi 14 release, but also in the CPU market with the possibility of an R5 3500 and the 3950X coming up in September. There's also the elusive Threadripper for which we actually have no information coming directly from the company. All we know is that a 16 and a 32 core SKU should be available. With mainstream Ryzen, each generation came with a new and improved chipset. But as we saw last year, Threadripper wasn't offered the same luxury. We're still running on the 2017 X399 platform. Well, according to a USB IF filing, Threadripper 3 might come out with three different chipsets. Surprisingly, AMD is finally moving away from the whole 99 naming scheme. That way, there would be no more confusion with Intel products. Instead, we could get three different chipsets called TRX40, TRX80, and W. WRX80. TRX40 was confirmed by sources at ASUS who spoke with videocards.com. At least two motherboards are in the works for ASUS, the Prime TRX40 Pro and the ROG Strix TRX40E Gaming. It's unclear why there are three chipsets available, but here are some of the likely reasons. Those are pretty much just speculation, so take them with a huge grain of salt, maybe like a block of salt, like cook things on the block of salts? Yeah, those things. One of the options could be that TRX40 could support quad-channel memory, just like X399, and both the TRX80 and WRX80 could, as the name suggests, bump that up to 8-channel memory support. Some also speculate that the 80 version would support higher than 32 cores, but I doubt AMD would put such an arbitrary limit between brand new chipsets they would release at the same time. Another option to separate the three is that the WRX boards would support dual socket for Threadripper, and while I really really don't think it's going to happen, it's a possibility. Now, I know what you're thinking, that would deeply cannibalize the Epic Rome CPUs, but I don't think so. AMD has so much more to offer with Epic for the server market to differentiate it. There are the 128 lanes of PCIe, there are more layers of security, and more importantly, especially for the server market, there's 24-7 AMD support. There's a lot more than just cores to differentiate a server from an enthusiast product. I guess we'll have to wait until AMD's next event to see any development. Right now, they have one event scheduled for IBC 2019 in about two weeks, and another one about a week after that at the Strata Data Conference. There's a chance that they have something prior to that, maybe on the 7th of September, so that might be where we possibly learn about the R5 3500 or the R9 3900 non-X. In other AMD news, you might have heard that the company has finally surpassed Nvidia in overall GPU shipment for the first time since 2013. And while that sounds like an achievement, it's not as impressive as we might think. Overall shipments mean everything except for consoles, so APUs and mobile chips count towards that. That's why Intel is all the way up there at 66.9% of the market. Almost every Intel processor ship with some sort of Intel graphics, and since Nvidia Nvidia doesn't really offer x86 processors and can't because of the Intel, AMD, and VIA exclusivity, Nvidia can't really move up in that department. On the side that we actually care about, and that is discrete graphics only, AMD is still Ryzen, but uh, it's nowhere near Nvidia. AMD gained 10% in one quarter over Nvidia, sitting at 32% of the market right now. I guess we'll have to wait for the full Navi lineup to figure out exactly where AMD will stand. Moving on, with TSMC and Samsung pushing the limits of silicon, we're going to need to find a way to cope with the ever-decreasing node sizes. We're already at 7 nanometers, TSMC is already taking orders for their 5 nanometer process, and Samsung is in the lead with a 3 nanometer GAA process in development. Now I know, those process nodes aren't exactly the size that they say they are, but the more we stay on a process, the more it's optimized, and the more we need to move to a smaller design. I mean, just ask Intel. 
they've been on that tick cycle for a really long time. We've heard that carbon nanotubes might be the answer, and we saw some examples of that over the years, but nothing that could actually run a program properly using currently available architecture. Well, that changed this week with a group of researchers at MIT who built a carbon nanotube CPU based on the RISC-V architecture, and it's called the RV16X Nano. It's only capable of executing a good old Hello World program right now, but I mean, you know, you do what, what you can. Now, does that mean that we're close to having them in RPCs? I, I mean, we're far from it, actually. Foundries and companies like AMD and Intel have proven again and again that scaling down isn't the only way to gain performance. Intel has been on 14 nanometers for the longest time and yet are still able to squeeze more juice out of it. And they also have other plans like Foveros and stuff. As for AMD, they're out of the box thinking like the chiplet design is sure to last through different nodes. As for Nvidia, they kind of just go bigger on the die. That's pretty much it. So yeah, carbon nanotubes, more like carbon nano see you in 20 years tube. In gaming news, if you're an enthusiast of uh, puzzle platformers or just platformers in general, Celeste and Inside are both free on the Epic Store. 100% free. This is not an ad, I just think Celeste is an amazing game. So check it out if you have uh, zero dollars. <laughs> Quick note before we end here, I have been collecting questions for a Q&A video I'm posting next week. So go ahead, put them down below with the hashtag Q and A, the letters Q and and A, okay? The question could be about me, they could be about the channel, they could be about tech. It doesn't really matter, I'll have fun with it. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh yeah, y'all saw? I have a new shirt. I have. I bought like 10 new shirts. In case you guys had noticed that I've been cycling through like five shirts. Yeah, I got new ones. Thank you. <laughs>